What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of stuff going on with a, a lot of, with the tropics right now. Excuse me for that. We have Tropical Storm Sean that is currently formed out here in the main development region. We have a new area of interest right behind that that is expected to continue to organize and develop and potentially be a big threat to the Lesser Antilles. And we're also looking at a potential threat out here in the Caribbean Sea. So we'll have to keep an eye on all these things as time continues to go on, folks. Here's what we have for you guys right here. We're going to go ahead and start with Tropical Storm Sean, according to the NHC. Right now, the winds are at 40 miles per hour. The current pressure on this is approximately 1,006 millibars. Its current location is 10.9 degrees north. 34.4 degrees west, and it's currently moving west-northwest at 13 miles per hour. So here's the cone we have right here. We'll get to that in just a second. Here's the public advise advisory. It is about what, 780 miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, and, or, and it's moving at 285 degrees. Tropical storm force winds extend outwards 90 miles from the center, so we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the discussion we have going on with this. This morning, satellite imagery depicts Sean as a rather disorganized tropical storm with some convective bursting occurring to the northwest and southeast of its longitude center. Subje uh, subjective satellite in uh, in uh, intensity estimates from the SAB and TAFB are a consensus of about 35 knots, thus the initial intensity is held at 35 knots or 40 miles per hour for those of you who live in the United States. And ASCAT uh, pass about at around 12, UT, uh, 12 UTC suggested that the wind speed uh, value could be a little generous. The intensity forecast is expected to remain 35 knots or 40 miles per hour over the next uh, first 12 hours as the storm already appears embedded in an environment of moderate wind shear. Thereafter, there may be an opportunity for Sean to intensify slightly as it moves towards the region of lower wind shear before the current mid latitude moisture begins to decrease by the weekend is expected to gradually weaken at that current point. And as you can see, this is what we have right here. It's expected to potentially strike up to a 45 mile per hour tropical storm briefly. Well, not briefly. It's uh, it's going to be for a long period of time before starting to weaken due to heightened wind shear and drier air before ultimately becoming just a, a post-tropical cyclone and maybe just an open wave down the road. That's what we have with the cone right here. Based off what we have, it's expected to stay in the main development region as a weak to moderate tropical storm. We'll have to see how that whole thing plays out with the wind shear and the moisture component as time continues to go on. But it's definitely something that we need to continue to keep an eye on as time continues to progress. Another thing I'm paying attention to as well at this current point is this area of interest that was designated last night in the eastern tropical Atlantic. Here's the situation. A tropical wave located several hundred miles to the south-southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands is producing a large area of showers and thunderstorms. This activity is showing some signs of organization this morning, and environmental conditions appear conducive for some additional development of the system over the next several days while it moves westward across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. There is going to be a high pressure system building up around this area so that that could potentially mean this could be a threat for the Lesser Antilles down the road. I'm not saying it's going to be a threat right now, but based on the tr uh, on the current track, it's moving due west instead of west-northwest like Sean is and has been right now, so we'll have to pay attention to it. Formation chance through the next 48 hours is at 20%. Formation chance in the next seven days is 30%. So those chances have continued to increase. If we go ahead and show you the archives for tropical weather outlooks, we can go ahead and pull it up, pull that up. Here's what we had earlier today. We were at 10 and 20 at 2 a at 2 a.m. Eastern, and we didn't even have any uh, have anything at that point. So this has been a rather uh, quickly developing situation. As time continues to go on, so we'll have to pay attention to it as, once again, we continue to get more data. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of stuff we need to cover with the models and everything like that in the tropics. And as we continue to get into this active weather period, folks, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information, be sure to use the code PREDICTOR from the link in the description down below for 50% off for your first month. So with that being said, folks, let's go ahead and get into the European models as well as the rest of the operational and see how this all, whole thing plays out. 
So here's the European at this current point. European model is having is a little bit delayed at this current point. Uh, Sean at, at this point is starting to organize and develop, and then start to, and then kind of just meanders out here in the Atlantic. It's not expected to really strengthen that much, according to, especially after seeing what the NHC is putting out. However, I am paying attention to this area of interest right here, low pressure system that's kind of uh, south of where Sean is, and it's expected to continue to move uh, further and further to the west, bringing some potential impacts towards the Lesser Antilles. However, once it enters the Caribbean, that's where I get uh, where I'm going to get concerned because of the better conditions of the Caribbean Sea over there. I actually want to go ahead and pull up the shear forecast right now to kind of see what, what the Europeans thinking when it comes to this. When it, come, when it comes to the shear forecast, shear is expected to increase for a little bit, but then as this wave starts to approach the Caribbean Sea, the shear does start to decrease a bit in the Eastern Caribbean Sea. There is a bit of shear going on in the Central Caribbean. However, it's not going to be that much of a nuisance by the time it enters the Caribbean Sea. It's going to be fluctuating off and on. Still something to keep an eye out for, but these are going to be very good conditions once it enters the Caribbean Sea. And that's what's worrying me because we've all seen October hurricanes start to uh, get, uh, get uh, designate as a tropical wave. They get started as a tropical wave, excuse me. And then they take their time to organize and develop. They don't develop quick enough out in the main development region due to one factor or the other. But then as soon as they enter the Caribbean Sea, that's when the conditions really start to uh, ramp up in intensity. So that's my main concern going into this. So with that being said, it's something to keep an eye on for those of you who are in the Lesser Antilles and into the Caribbean Sea. However, please keep in mind that this is 10 days out. Anything can change at this current point. But at this current, uh, but at this time as well, we have to keep an eye on it as time continues to pr uh, progress. GFS uh, 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 model is doing something interesting as well. Here's the GFS with Sean. GFS is having Sean remain around a 50 mile per hour tropical storm before really weakening down to an open low and then just a tropical wave at that current point as it starts to approach. Real, uh, really uh, pr bring some potential rain towards the Leeward Islands, but the wave I'm paying attention to is right over here that's coming off the coast of Africa and it's really forecast to stay much further to the south than Sean is. However, the GFS is actually having this thing develop a little bit, which is pretty interesting to say at the very least. And then the GFS does this weird turn or something like that where it just moves like that. I will be completely honest with you when, I, when I'm looking at this. I don't like this turn primarily because it's extremely unrealistic because, uh, Unrealistic at this current point. You have high pressure systems all over the place. You don't exactly have a trough really starting to, uh, uh, to impede on that. So I don't see how the GFS is really ramping up. In fact, I don't really trust anything the GFS is throwing out like other than five days out where this wave is over here. So take that with a grain of salt. But even still, it still could potentially be a bit of a threat towards the Antilles down the road. Uh, down the road. But in, in this scenario, the GFS having to strengthen into a hurricane, basically typical GFS stuff. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I don't see that as of right now. We'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to progress. That's the GFS model at this current time. Next model we're showing you is the CMC. CMC has been a very interesting model to say at the very least. This, we saw the CMC predicting some tropical development in the Caribbean not too long ago. We'll have to see how that uh, if that trend continues. CMC is having Sean just kind of remaining a tropical storm, and then at this point we start to see uh, this new tropical wave start to potentially organize and develop out here in the Caribbean, out, not in the Caribbean, but in the main development region. It's definitely something to pay attention to as it's this is moving due west instead of west-northwest. And then we have this situation with the Central American Gyre over here. We're starting to see some low pressure starting to pop up about four to five days out at the time of recording this video. So, depending on how this whole thing plays out and how the and which way the Gyre goes, this could potentially be a threat to the Caribbean Sea down the road. And not only that, the CMC has been very, very, very consistent with producing such scenarios. So... What the CMC scenario is doing this time is actually is strengthening into a Category 1 hurricane before making landfall near the Belize-Mexico border. So definitely something to keep an eye on as time continues to progress. I know I keep saying that like a broken record, but this is such an... Uh, this is... Weather's unpredictable. It's something you need to keep an eye on. So that's what we have with the CMC at this current point. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the NavGem. NavGem, I will say, 
has been not the most reliable model out there, but it has been decent and it has had a few good takes. As for Sean, the Navgem is having this potentially get down to a 997 millibar tropical storm, maybe even a weak hurricane briefly. However, I'm going to be completely honest when I'm seeing this. I don't trust it. I don't trust it at all, primarily because just of the conditions. They're not as good. They're not really that good to support hurricane development. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but it's just the conditions just aren't adding up for me. So as for that, I'm just a little more skeptical than most people are. And the Navgems track is, it's not the most unrealistic in the world, but at the same time, I'm taking it with a grain of salt. And meanwhile, I'm paying, it's still paying attention to this area of interest over here, still moving due west instead of west-northwest like Sean is. And the Navgem has this as a 985 millibar hurricane approaching potentially the Lesser Antilles. So it's just... Yeah, I don't entirely trust it 100%. It's just, it doesn't sit well with me, to say at the very least. That's the Navgem. Last model we're going to show you is the Icon. Icon has been uh, has been a good take so far. Icon uh, model has showing Sean kind of remaining a weak tropical storm at this current point, then weakening down to a depression and just an open wave. Meanwhile, this area of interest over here, it's going to start organizing, potentially developing. The Icon is actually having this thing get to, uh, to a tropical storm while in the main development region, which I think is pretty interesting to say at the very least to see how this whole thing plays out. So either way, this is a rapidly developing situation at this current point. This is what we have going on uh, for in, the in the main development region. And this could be our last hurrah, not Sean, of these Cape Verde setups as we get into a more unfavorable area for development in the main development region going into l the later parts of October. Last thing we're showing you is conditions. Global sea temperatures continue to be as warm as ever in the Caribbean Sea. We're, show uh, we're seeing Gulf Mexico temperatures really starting to decline at a considerable pace, although there is still a lot of warm water to spare and a lot of warm water for these systems to play with if it wants to go in there. Caribbean Sea has been very warm altogether, 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit for those of you who live in the U.S. and Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, very warm waters when it comes to this. And even in the main development region, the southern part of the MDR, that's really what's they're starting to pull up, uh, pull up at this point. And the last thing we're sh uh, gonna, uh, really show you, other than the wind shear, is the ocean heat content. Ocean heat content continues to be very fiery in that part of the Caribbean Sea. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on, as we're seeing well over 200 OHC in some of these areas in the Caribbean Sea. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as time continues to go on, especially if that gyre starts to form in the Caribbean. It's going to be in the in great conditions for it to develop. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting for using the code PREDICTOR for 50% off your first month. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.